How's it going everybody? This is Waze back with another video on the channel. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to use Docker with IntelliJ based IDE such as WebStorm and how do you run Node.js stack in Docker by using WebStorm. So in this video, I'll walk you through how I set up every project and also how do I run all the stack in the Docker. Um, but first, let me quickly show you, I don't have a Node.js install. I don't have any NVM install. There are a lot of benefits of using Docker for development and a lot of people do that. But one of the benefit that I get out of here is that I don't have a cluttered computer. I don't have any files that I don't need anymore and it's just sitting there on my hard drive taking up space. Docker containers are great. You run the code whenever it's required. You stop them when it's done required and then you don't have to install anything. I don't install anything on my Mac directly. All I have to install is Docker and that's it. This video will be focusing on how to use JetBrains IDE with Docker, especially when it comes to Node.js. I'd like to share this website before we continue with the video. It's called Voges.com. If you're in Pakistan watching this video from Pakistan, this is a great website to find leather products. You can find bags, you can find wallets, belts. So all of these are original leather. I know the people who are running this website. They're not doing any drop shipping. They are basically creating these products in Pakistan and getting that, you know, done with the original leather. So do check out this website. You'll find great products. I got the links uh, down in the description of this video for their Instagram and a Facebook as well. Okay, let's continue with the video. You can download Docker from docker.com. I'll paste a link in the description and you can also go to the WebStorm for downloading. I'll paste a link in the description of this video. So first of all, I've created this Angular project and the way I'm gonna set it up with Docker is first of all, getting into WebStorm preferences. Here in this, you will go to languages and let me just zoom in a bit. So you go to Node.js, okay? So right now, as you can see, when I open this project in WebStorm, it's telling me there is no executable path. Well, that's right, because I don't have a Node.js installed or NPM installed. So what I'll do, I'll just click here, and I'll click on this Docker. Now, these images are appearing just because I have those images already pulled. You will click on Add and click on Add Remote, and then here you can access Docker, Docker Compose, Wagrain. Um, We'll focus on Docker, and then here Docker, will be running locally like docker on a mac here you will see image name so if i do a drop down you will see all the images that i pulled so if you want to use any other image you just select that i will select docker as an option and then from here i'm going to select node image so i will have this node column slim and i'll click ok i'm getting this error because i'm already using this image as it says that there is already the same interpreter so I click OK, click Cancel, click on this drop down, and I can select the same image. And if I didn't have that, for example, I'll go here and I will remove this one. Click OK, and then go back to Add, go Remote, Docker, and this time I'm going to select this and click OK. Now it selects that. Click on Apply, click on OK. Now at this stage, we have set up our Node.js interpreter for this project. Next, we're going to go to this command um, list here. And these are basically your NPN script. So if I take you to package.json file, here's your script. Now I'm going to be using this script called start. I'll click on drop down, click on edit configuration. Now this Angular CLI um, server is basically a start script in WebStorm. So the way you set up script is by, if you don't see this here, just click on plus and then select node. And then here you will select your interpreter. But if you have that script in NPN, you can click here, you can select NPN, and then from scripts drop down, you will see the list of uh, scripts that you have in your NPN. Okay, so I'll just get rid of this for now, and I will go ahead with this one. So first of all, let's just rename this to start. Okay, and then I'm gonna make sure that I've got this start script selected. Then we got this node interpreter selected, and then I'm gonna click on this uh, little folder icon there. From here, I will need to make sure that I put forward the port. So in this case, you can see I've got this container port porting to host port. And you might be wondering it's Angular application why I have this 4300. Well, basically I'm gonna be using this start script which has this dash dash flag 4300 and that's a porting 4300 instead of default 4200. So once you have that set up, that's all good. Click OK, click apply and click OK. Now we're gonna go to uh, WebStorm and here I'll just click on this play button. Now notice that I don't have, uh, basically I don't have any container that is 
you know, serving this Angular Farm project. So I'll click on this play button. It is going to spin up another container. You'll see it is performing 4300. So every time I will basically need to run this project, all I gotta do is click on the start button, which is already set up. And if you are working on a different computer, so you wanna share this setting with your team, you can go here, click on edit, and then you can just uh, check this store as project file, put it in a git, and then you'll be able to, you know, grab this configuration automatically wherever you go with this project. At this stage, we have an application running on Docker, but also the port is being forwarded. You can see we added that in the script itself. So that's why the Docker container is exporting. Now if you go to Docker container in the Docker desktop, you can look at the logs and you can also access terminal. You can do that in WebStorm as well, but you can also access that in Docker uh, desktop itself. So if I tap the dash dash version, you can see it's telling me the version it is using. It's 16.9.0. So I have access to node within the terminal. Now, a couple more things I would like to show here in a WebStorm. So here, if you go to services, you'll be able to access your terminal and you can um, go to terminal here to get to your uh, Docker container terminal. You can take a look at a dashboard, which will give you a lot more information about the container. For example, these are the ports being forwarded and if there is any volume being mounted. Now, I'm going to stop this script from um, WebStorm and you'll see when I stop it, it will basically clear out the, uh, the container that was serving your application. And if you click on start again, it will run the container again automatically for you. As long as you have Docker desktop installed, it just works smoothly. So the takeaway from this video is that you can keep your con computer clean. You don't have to install anything which will clutter your computer. You can use Docker desktop and a WebStorm or even VS Code. I have a separate tutorial for that. I might put the video link to the description of this video. You can use these tools to actually run your application in Docker and you can also debug. So you might be wondering how I'm going to debug. Well, basically, if you go to WebStorm and look at all scripts, here you got an Angular application and I will click on edit. And here it's targeting uh, 4200, but I'll use this 4300. And, and then it will basically open up the browser that it selected here, which is a Chrome Dev browser. You can apply and you run, you'll see the browser will come up with 4300. But right now, our, uh, let's just say, our application is not running. So we'll quickly go ahead and then start the script. You'll see the container will come up with the port 4300. And now once the application is running, as you can see here in the run window, you'll go to the browser and you will see the Angular application running. And this will basically hit the breakpoint as well. So the second script that I ran, it was basically just an Angular application. It's automatically available for you when you create a new application in Angular. So if you go to edit configuration, you can take a look at what sort of path configuration it is. You can create your own. So you click on this plus button, go to JavaScript debug, and then name it, and then URL, that's it. So we'll go back and take a look at if our application is being served now. So if I refresh, I'll close 4300, you'll see it is, okay, so it, now it is serving on 4200. I can try hitting 4200, but it's not gonna work because if you look at our Docker desktop, it is port forwarding 4300. And that's the configuration that we set up in this script. So there's two ways you can fix it. Either you modify the script, which I can do right now. So if I click on edit and go here and just change this to, let's say, click on edit, we change this to 4200 and then change the container port to 4200 as well. Let's click on OK. OK, apply, close, and I'm going to rerun this start script. And this time, this is going to export this 4200 port, which your application runs on. Um, it will just serve the application. Or you could go to your start script and you could add something like dash dash port would be 4300. That's basically Angular thing. You will just run the application on 4300, then that would have been uh, working as well. So let's save it. Now you can see it is on 4200 and our application is basically being served in the browser. There you go. So we can go to, let's just say WebStorm and I'm going to go to this file. I'll just do a breakpoint there and then try refreshing the application. It is going to hit the breakpoint where you need to start the your Angular application script again. Now it will run that in the debugged browser. 
right now it's going to be running at 4300 which means we're going to go to edit configuration we go to javascript click here and i'm going to change this to 4200 click ok ok close this close that and then just run a debug session again and i can see when the application loads it is going to hit the breakpoint and you can debug and take a look at all your threads and variables and console elements and scripts here okay so that was it for this video thanks for watching subscribe to the channel and i'll speak to you guys in the next one cheers